Good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is James Pan. And today we're, this webinar is for producing quality video-based content. And this webinar will cover from creating a simple Zoom recording to editing and up uploading and editing to the video to Panopto. So the technology we'll be using is Zoom and Panopto. And so without further ado, I just want to let everyone know this is being recorded and this video or webinar will be available at the same link where you did your registration. So I will give you guys a quick overview. I will cover the technologies and then I will do a live demo. So let's begin. So the two tools we'll be using is um, Panopto. Oops, here we go. Yes, we'll be using Zoom and Panopto. So for many of us, we have been using Zoom to create recordings for our classes. And one way uh, that we can do a better job is we make, we'll make sure we have good lighting when we do our Zoom recordings. And if you are doing long Zoom recordings for maybe for many hours, I would suggest you pause the video and take a break and then resume recording. So how do you get to your Zoom videos? When you use a Zoom client, you will notice there's a gear icon. When you click that, it will start and you will go into the Zoom settings menu. By clicking the record, by clicking the recording tab, you'll be able to see your local file recordings. Or if you um, record to the cloud, you can simply click the word manage and it will open a web page where you can see all your Zoom recordings that are recorded onto the cloud. So if you need to do the editing or use Panopto, well, you have to download those videos and then upload into the Panopto video service. So you will go into Canvas to activate your Panopto. And don't worry, I will be doing a live demo on all this. And if you have any question, please feel free to click the Q&A. We will be answering your questions as well. So in, in this case, in my Canvas <clears throat> demo course, once I click Panopto, I will see a button called Create. And by clicking the Upload Media, I will be able to upload any videos into Panopto for this particular course. And what Panopto will do is it will take maybe up to 20 or 30 minutes to process the video for captioning. And once the processing is done, we'll be able to edit we'll be able to edit the video and do more fun stuff with Panopto. And I got a first question from Darius. Can you access Panopto outside the canvas? Actually, the, the answer is yes, but I will, you will put, I will go over that as well because in order to uh, record or use Panopto, you will have to download the Panopto recorder. That is a program that's installed locally onto your PC. You can click and use the program, but you have to sign in and you have to pick which particular campus course you want to save your videos into. And I will show, please remind me before I end this and I will show you guys a full demo. And I will now go share my full computer screen where I will go through the whole steps with you all. So let me share my new screen and I'm going to stop this for a moment. So let me go ahead and repeat all the steps. Oh, another question. Is another question? No. So as I said earlier, when you do your Zoom recordings, how do you um, find your videos and how do you upload into Panopto? You will simply click the setting. Hold on a second. Okay. You simply click <clears throat> the gear icon and go into settings. When you click recording, as I'm using a Mac, this is the path 
for where I save my local videos. So you can click open and I can pick the folder where I have my videos. And you have you should remember the location. And then if you have recordings that are save on your Zoom recording that's save onto the cloud, you simply click manage and it will open a new web tab. So so for the Zoom recordings, in order for you to download, you simply click more and you can download the video. And the video will be on your computer's download folder. So let's go into Canvas. So typically, so typically when you use cannot, you can see a Zoom window. Okay, I am so sorry. Let me share this again. Thank you. You cannot see my Zoom window. I share. Okay. Well, I am. They cannot see it, huh? So, oh. James, I, I'm seeing your Canvas page on the window. Is okay, that what so, you're wanting? Uh, yes, because I was going to show them uh, the Zoom windows, but I guess I make. I guess I cannot share the Zoom window while I'm in Zoom. But um, I will send screenshots and more instruction. Uh, please be sure to leave us your email address and we can send you some description if I miss something. But anyway, um, once you have located your Zoom recordings, in order to use Panopto, at least for the first time, you must sign into Canvas. And, and Panopto is course specific. So for example, if I want to use Panopto in my development course, you have to click the course and you have to click Panopto at least once because this will generate a the Panopto folder where the video recording will be um, associated with the Canvas course. So earlier in my very short presentation, I mentioned how to upload the video. You simply click create and you can upload the media. So I have downloaded my video from the cloud from the Zoom web page. So I simply click this and I will go into my downloaded folders and I can select what I have downloaded and I can just upload to Panopto. This is just a very short test video. So when the video is up, done uploading, I go back to my Canvas page, it will show you the status, which is processing. Depending on how long is the video, depending on how long is the video, it may take up to 30 minutes to process. Ah, okay. James, so, we had a question in the chat. Yes, Can you I talk you. on why we would upload to Panopto instead of straight to, straight to Canvas? Great, great question. Um, because Panopto is a video um, service. If you upload your video into your Canvas course, let's just say you put it in files, you only have about two gig of space for each course, okay? And if you link the video, you will not be able to get the analytics that you want because it is simply a video in Canvas. So by uploading the recordings into Panopto, you will be able to do a lot of few, you will be able to do a few things. So for example, I have uploaded my test Zoom video earlier. I don't want you guys to watch the processing. So I did one a moment ago. So I will go for all these buttons, hopefully not delete. So when I go into settings, I can change the title of the video. I can say, um, Be sure it's safe. So very easy. But then if I want to use this video in different course, notice there's a word folder. When I hit edit, when I hit edit, I will have a drop list. I have actually, I have different folders, but since I only have pressed pen up to for this particular course, I only have one, 
but for the instructors or for the faculty members who have multiple uh, courses, you can save the video into a different location because each particular Panopto folder will have its specific uh, access permission. I will show you all. By, by default, if you hit share, it will, it will show you who can create and who can read, who can access your video. So for the course creator, which will include the instructor, the admin, the TA, then they will be able to upload videos into the course. But for the course student, they will have the default rights as viewer, which they can only view the video you create. So let's do a quick edit. So when I go to my video, I simply click edit and you will open a brand new web tab. This is a 10 seconds video, so I'm gonna play for you all. This is a local test video for Zoom. I will record for maybe 10 seconds and then create the file and upload to tab. Yes, you can see this short video that I upload to Panopto will be, <clears throat> you have machine captioning. And it's done automatically. That's what the processing, um, that's why the processing will take some time. And in my original video, the word record was misunderstood as cut. So if you all have used Kaltura before, uh, that uh, you will remember that the, the Caption editing is not easy at all. But in Panopto, you simply click the caption tab and you can click the window. So I know the word cut is not what I want. So I simply just make a quick edit. And when I'm done, I will hit apply. So if you want to produce a, uh, if you want to produce a video with good captioning, you can do so very simply after you click edit for your video. So I will record for maybe 10 seconds and then create the file and upload to Panopto. Thank you. As you can see, I simply removed the incorrect word of the, or you can change the punctuation. So let me go back to show you something fun. When I do editing, or when I click the edit button, you can see this is actually the video clip down below. Well, for the first two seconds, I have like some empty time that I don't want um, the student to listen. And oftentimes, you know, when we do Zoom uh, recording for class, we start early, we may have 10 or 15 minutes of um, unwanted footage. So if you upload your Zoom video into Panopto, you can use Panopto's editing feature to edit out what you don't want. So for example, in my video, for the first two seconds, I don't want the, I don't want this two seconds or maybe two minutes. I simply click where I want and I go backward and highlight. This particular highlight portion will now be hidden from your viewer. And there's no permanent, permanent um, deletion on any Panopto videos. Everything can be undo, so it's non-destructive. So I can do multiple edits, and I see another empty spot here. So I simply click that. Or even if there's something I don't want at the end, I simply highlight. And when I'm done with my edits, I will simply click Apply. What Panopto will now do is it will reprocess the video, and all those portions that I grayed out will be removed. I got another question, but I will answer that in just one second. So um, as you can see, every time I do some changes in the video, you will be reprocessed. So a tip I would suggest for everyone is when you finish recording, whether it's in Zoom or anything else, review the video and get the time codes of where you want to make the edit. And then when you do edit in Panopto, do all your edits or do all your removal at once before you hit apply. Otherwise, 
each time you do an edit, you when you hit apply, you have to wait for it to be processed. So let me answer uh, uh, Neely Meyer's question. So can, can, can students also use Panopto to produce video presentation, for example, that they upload to Canvas? This is a local test video for Zoom. Sorry. We will record for maybe 10 seconds and then. <laughs> so thank you. the editing is done. So you just start playing back. So let me finish answering the question. Yes and no. Um, if, if you want your student to use Pan Opto, uh, which is not recommended, you will have to turn on a feature in your Canvas course, in your Canvas Pan Opto uh, feature, which I'm going to show you all right now. In your Pan Opto, in your Canvas course where you have your Pan Opto, there's a setting gearbox for this folder. Oh, one question at that. <laughs> so um, there is something called assignment folder. By default, your students only have viewer or fewer access right. They can only view video created by you. If you want them to use Pan Opto, you have to turn on the assignment folder where in this folder they can upload um, the video. But that's a catch. If you are doing a grade based uh, video, uh, once the student finish uploading their assignments, let me click and create one. You have to close it. If you don't close it, student will still have the ability to re-edit and have newer version into the assignment. So basically it's not a good thing. So, uh, so for simple recording that your student are used to, used to do in Kaltura, this is what I would suggest. I know I'm moving away from Panopto, but let me just show you what I mean. If I am a student and I am trying to do an assignment and where I have to upload a video, let's just say I'm doing this at a page. Um, sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. Um, where you will see the typical Canvas editor, there is a button right here it's called Record and Upload Medias. This is a web-based recording. So we, instead of remembering to open a Panopto assignment or closing an assignment folder, if you need your student to submit a video, you simply ask them to click Record and Upload Media. They will be able to record themselves. And then when they finish, they can simply upload there. Let me just do a quick recording. Hi, how are you? Thank you. So when I'm done, I can give a title. Yes, test video in Canvas. And I will save. And so wherever you have the video, wherever you have the Canvas editor, you'll be able to use this feature, whether it's assignment, uh, discussion, or pages. So I hope this will answer uh, I hope this will answer the question for um, someone <laughs> in the Q&A. So let me go back to Panopto and I will address another question in just a moment. My eyes are really bad. So uh, this is for Professor Myers. Uh, unfortunately, if they're not using Panopto, they will not be able to add caption because the Canvas viewing recorder or the web recorder is simply just a web, uh, it's just a video recorder. The captioning is always um, something that you have to use Panopto or Kaltura or some video service to have the captioning feature. So if you need your students to do a video with captioning, then your only option is to turn on the Panopto assignment folder and you have to actively remember to turn it off so your student cannot make um, additional or updated revision on the video. Uh, let me see. You said the way While to you're talking about captions, we had one other caption question. Do you know if the only language that Panopto captions in is English? Thank you for this question. Unfortunately for Panopto, the only language it will caption for now is English. 
but as you can see, the, ed the caption editing is pretty simple. If you want to produce a quality recording, I will also suggest have a script where you can type out what you want to say and do your recording. Uh, this way, you can have the perfect um, text for your captioning to be used with Panopto. Um, so let me go back to my Panopto videos again. I don't know if anyone is interested in seeing video quiz. Maybe I will wait. Uh, well, while we have um, two other questions about editing, since sure. that was another topic we were just talking about. Is Please. there a way to preview the edits without applying them? Um, that is a good question. Let me do a quick test. Uh, I think so. So is it the local test video for Zoom. I will record for maybe ten seconds, and then. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so you know this video is edited already. So let me re-edit this video again without applying the changes. So I'll hit edit. <clears throat> And let me just take out more. I'll take, I'll take out this whole part. So this will be a super short video. I think I can just play it. It's over Zoom. I will record for maybe 10 seconds and then go. So as you can see, the preview does work. I hope you answer your question. Yes, now, and then one more on editing. Um, once you edit and save the file in Panopto, can you pull it out to use it in another way, like download the edited version? Uh, the answer is yes. Okay. So I will show you all how to do this. Um, let me go ahead and do all my non-intentional edit. So I will revert my video back to normal. So all my edits, well, I can, um, well, you, you should, I can either undo or revert. So I will, whatever I have done to this video will be removed. So to answer the question, when you finish editing the Panopto video, please remember it's non-destructive. It basically just hide the portion you don't want your viewer to see. And um, I believe it's in, uh, if you click the actual video, not edit, you just click the title, you will see up here that is a download, download option. You can download your video so you can use it elsewhere. Uh, but I would say the Panopto editor, while it's simple, is not a, how should I say, is no substitution for real video ed editing. So if you have sophisticated, if you need to edit your video uh, by joining clips and doing other stuff, I would suggest don't use Panopto because it takes too long for the processing to be done as everything is in the cloud. Um, Okay, perfect. I see another question from Lisa. Yes. Um, and earlier, one uh, someone asked, why do we want to um, use Panopto when we can simply, you know, just upload the video in Canvas? Well, if you want to record a class video, including PowerPoint, I'm going to do one right now. Panopto is a better choice than using Zoom. Zoom is easy because you can have uh, is for live communication. But if you are doing a recording, or if you want to pre-record something where you want to use your PowerPoint, you will record a new session, and I will open my Panopto recorder. I don't know if you all can see it. Please let me know if you can see the screen. I hope yes. You know. Okay, awesome. So if I want to record an annotated PowerPoint, as you can see, my primary source is my own video. And just remember, the Mac version is a little bit different than PC. And I want to record a PowerPoint, so I'll simply click this. And when I'm ready to record, I simply hit record. And this will be starting, right? And I will go back to my PowerPoint. Hello, this is my demo slide. This is my thank you slide that you guys are seeing earlier. Thank you. So and this go back. To, so next thing I will do is I will go back to my Panopto. I will simply stop this recording. And I'll give you a name. Test Panopto recording. 
and I'll upload. So you can tell this video is being uploaded to the Panopto service and you will be processed. Okay, so let me go back to my uh, web browser. I'm gonna refresh my page. As you can see, what I did a moment ago is being processed, but I will show and answer your question for Ms. Nelson. I did a PowerPoint test a long time ago. So I'm just gonna click and play and show you all what it looks like. And I'm gonna pause it. Uh, apparently I wear the same, same shirt as today. But uh, so um, if I, I'm gonna click this video. Welcome to PowerPoint for Mac. This is slide one. And quick access to commands. Slide two. Give feedback in comments. So when I'm done with my PowerPoint, I simply hit escape and quit the slideshow and I'll stop my. So as you can see, um, when I record using the Panopto recorder, I am able to record my slides and their time. And when your student watch this video, he or she will have the ability to toggle um, the screen so he or she can look at the presenter in a bigger window or he or she can look at the PowerPoint. And one good thing about Panopto is this, if, I, um, if I'm a student, there's something you mention or there's something you show up that you show on your PowerPoint slide, what Panopto will do is it will do, it will do optical character recognition. So every word in PowerPoint is uh, OCR and every word of course is captioned. If I am a student watching this video and I want to know more about Mac, I simply type the word Mac, Panopto will index every time the word Mac is spoken or, uh, or displayed and the student can go, go to a particular time spot to look at the topic. So this is something that uh, Zoom cannot do. And this is something Kaltura cannot do either. So I would suggest if you want, if you always record in PowerPoint lecture for your student to watch, please use Panopto Recorder. And there are direct training videos available from the OIT website, and you can contact your local ATSD for more questions on how to use the Panopto Recorder and the editing. Now for this video, I just show you all, you probably saw something like, let me go back to the beginning. Uh, maybe not. Well, there's one more thing I can show you in Panopto. Let me go back to my test video again. When I do edit, you will see, I will show you two, thing, two, uh, two things. All this highlighted portion that actually exists in cuts. So technically, if you want to remove them, let's just say I want to remove the last cut here. This is my third cut. I can click the dots, I can delete. So my edit is gone. And if I know the time code of where I want to hide my video, I can simply go into my second, go into a particular edit and I can change the time. So I can say from five, from, from second number five, I can go to 10 seconds. So you can see now my edits has increased. This may be easier if you have the time codes of where you want to do your edits. So I would suggest um, you don't have to be perfect and you know, find out exactly where you want to stop. If you just highlight some portion and you know it's, it is your a particular cut, you can go into the cuts menu and edit the time codes to have a precise cut for your video. And what I want to show you all next is quizzes. For those who have used Kaltura before, um, you remember Kaltura has something called video quiz. Panopto has the same feature. So a video quiz, I would say, uh, it's like a online um, uh, 
defensive driving test where you can watch a portion of the video and the viewer will get a question. And in order for the video to continue, the viewer will have to answer the question. So to do that in Panopto is actually very simple. You will locate wherever you want to insert the question. So for example, if I want to stop my question right here on the fifth second, I simply click, click quizzes and add a quiz. And I will have multiple, I will have various choices. I, um, I will have various choices. Um, I have one done before, sorry. So this is where I insert my first quiz. I can say, I can give you a name, um, Q1. I can say a question, what is, what, I <laughs> cannot type, so sorry. What is my name? Click too much. So I select the right answer. So, and then I can add this, and then I can hit done, or I can add one more question. Now, before I finish adding this question, I want to show you, you have true false, multiple choice, multiple select, and fill in the blank as the option. So I will do this multiple choice question first, and I will add another question in there, which will be fill in the blank. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Probably did it wrong because I had two questions in one spot. But anyway, as you as you can see, that's how you insert a question. Let's just see what happens when I um, play this back. I think I oh I have to hit apply. <laughs> Very important. If you don't hit apply and you exit the page, um, then you won't save your change. So please remember whether you edit or whether, anytime you you do something with your video, please be sure to hit apply. And remember, none of the edits are permanent or don't, uh, they're non-destructive. So you can undo or revert if you make a mistake. So let me see if this video is available. So it's processing. So any other question? Um, any other question I can answer for you all? We have a question in the Q&A. Um, yes. How do we see their responses after the class has taken this quiz? Does it integrate with Canvas as a quiz grade? It could be. It could be. Um, so whoever asked this question, please email. Uh, you can email me. Uh, my e I'm going to send my email just to everyone. Whoops. Can I not type? Um, for some reason, I'm not typing. If someone can type my email address, which is just pan, P-A-N. Zoom. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, um, if some okay, thank you so much. Yeah, that's my email address. Please, um, for any special question, please email me, or you can email help at smu.edu. I would like to um, have specific instruction for you all, um, so I can, you know, share with you all. But um, some of the process may may take a little time, so please email me, and I'll make sure I get you all the answer. So let's let, let's look at the test video. As I click the title, it's just a video, but watch out for this is a local Zoom. I hope, sorry, let me move this. So the question. <laughs> oh, um, I should have space on the question, but let me almost I'm I'm put something wrong. So you can see the answer, but anyway, um, I believe Panopto quiz can be integrated with Canvas, so you can actually um, get more engagement from the students, especially if you discuss a very um, uh, difficult topic. And in order for the student to know, well, in order for you to know where the student pay attention, it's good to give them some quizzes 
whether for grade or not, at least they will know uh, whether they understand the subject matters. So there's another question for Patricia Porter. Let me see. Yes, for Patricia, each student, when they answer the question, you have, it's a separate grade. So um, this is just like how Kaltura video quiz was done before. Uh, anyway, please be sure to email me so I can give you specific instruction. And remember, whatever I show you all, is, I will say, please do a quick demo and do a quick practice. Um, once you have tried it, it's not difficult at all. And remember, Panopto always have updates. The slide zoom. <laughs> so, uh, so anything else? Let's see. So we've got um, a little less than ten minutes left, and there are two questions that I think we should cover for sure. One is, can you explain the difference between secondary one and secondary two options when you're making a recording? Okay, and what's the second question? Let me get both of them and I'll answer both of them. <laughs> the second one is talking about student analytics and if you can see whether a student viewed a Panopto video. Thank you so much for asking the question. So um, let me go back to show you my Panopto recorder. Okay. Um, so yes, thank, thank you for bringing this up. If I am using a computer with multiple source, Okay, your primary one could be your webcam. But the secondary usually is for your computer desktop. And unfortunately, even if I select uh, display, uh, my Thunderbolt display, you can see it on the Mac. There's no preview. But you can have, if you have multiple um, monitors, let's just say you are teaching a biology class where you will have you have to do a screen capture of, of, of another image on a desktop. That's what the secondary display will be. Uh, so usually it's external monitor, or if you have a external video device, you can toggle, or you can, it will record up to, I guess, three different video sources. So in your video, you can, hide, you can do advanced editing where you can hide one of the video track. So for example, if I am recording a desktop uh, doing some kind of coding and I want to hide my, uh, I will just record this video with my webcam. But when I actually edit the video, I can hide the video for my webcam and I will specifically have the track for the computer desktop, desktop screen. Or if you're using a USB webcam or another device, you can be handwriting so you can capture the additional video source. And please email me. I will give you specific um, links to read about all this. And then the second question about analytics. OK, let me go there. If I go back to my campus course, I will see something called stats. I can click that. This is the analytics. It will show you who has seen your video or how much they have watched. So I don't know if you all can see this screen, but I would say if you are teaching a summer course, uh, at least upload an intro video and then in Panopto. Once the video um, is available, you can click the, the stats. Sorry, let me show you again for the video that you're interested in the analytics, simply click the stats button and you can see who has seen it. Now, um, although I'm not showing you in Zoom, actually in Zoom, there's also an analytic feature you can, you can see. But I think in general for course uh, recording, I think it will be much better to use Panopto to record um, unless you're recording a live class in Zoom, and then you transfer into Panopto. So it's up to you how you want to do this. But remember, um, there's no search feature. If you're recording a Zoom PowerPoint, you will simply be a video of you showing your PowerPoint slides. Any other question I may answer? Yes. So we had the question at the beginning asking if we could access Panopto outside of Canvas. And yes. a similar follow-up question. Um, okay. 
can you access Panopto or can you move Panopto videos between classes? So can you create a video before your Canvas course is even published or available to you? Of course. So let me answer the question in the reverse order. I will show you what, um, uh, so of course the first thing I mentioned was you have to go into your Canvas course. Um, so you will create um, the Panopto folder Okay, you, your, four, your four classes will not be available until June, okay? But even in your existing summer classes, you can, or your spring course, just go into one, click Panopto, and go ahead and create a video, okay? You may be for that class. So once the video is created, you can click share. You know, sorry, not share, an overview, where you have the folder, Every SMU user will have this folder called My Folder. So you can simply save your video in My Folder, which the only permission My Folder has is you as the creator that can access it. Nobody can do anything with it, okay? So you can save your video into My Folder. So to answer the other question, can you use Pen Opto without um, without uh, by itself, actually, it's yes. Let me go ahead and minimize this. And I, <laughs> sorry, I don't know if you all can see my Panopto program. When I open this program, because I'm not using Canvas, I have to sign in. So technically, when I do a recording, I it can record to my computer first until I'm ready to upload. Okay, so I'm gonna do one quick recording. I'm not in any, I'm not signing in. Um, so, hello, I'm doing a test, blah, blah, blah. So when I'm done, this video is actually, is offline. So it, it is on your own computer. If you sign in, which is, you really should sign in from Canvas, but I'm just going to sign in really quickly. <clears throat> this video now is offline. I can, because I sign in, I can pick any folder that I have um, activate. If I have ten Canvas courses, I never click Panopto. You won't. You won't even see. You won't even see the folder but you will always see my, my folder. So you can save your video. You can upload in there. Once the video is in this particular folder, you can go back to the web interface and click the folder. You can click the folder and you can save. So you can, well, you would, sorry. You will find the video and you can save the location to your course. And, but if you have any question, please email me. Um, I would say, is really better to record into your class first, or at least to a Canvas course and then move from there. Uh, off, offline recording is okay, um, but you know, if you have a lot of offline recording, let's just say you upload a bunch of them, it will take a, lot, it will take a long time to process all of them to be ready. So I think I have one minute left or I'm time is up. <laughs> Any other question I may answer? Yes, no? <laughs> but anyway, um, if you have additional questions, please feel free to email me or the help desk, which is help at smu.edu. And I thank you for everyone for watching this. And if you all have any question, please let OIT know or let your local ATSC know. We will do our best to assist you. And yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your nice comment. Um, just do some practice and this should be pretty easy. Thank you, James. And we will be sharing that information about the quizzes with everyone that was registered for this session. Great. Thank you, everyone, right. for your time and attention. Thank you.